The Cub is the safest airplane in the world. It can just barely kill you. Now that's an age-old Max Stanley quote. Max was a test pilot for Northrop referring to the Piper J3 Cub. And what he's referring to is the inherent safety of a well-designed, light, low-speed aircraft. And recently it got me thinking that the kit box checks all those boxes, but might actually take it even a step further. The other day, I was out shaking the cobwebs off after spending a couple weeks outside of the cockpit, doing my regular routine of going up, doing some slow flight, and some stalls. Okay, this would be a power off stall. The tail's stalled, but the wing won't get to stall. While doing stalls, I started thinking, this isn't really a good representation of what's gonna get me, because obviously in the real world, I'm not gonna be flying flat and level, pulling slowly back into a stall, looking for the sign of a stall, and then recovering. The dangerous thing's gonna be unintentional stalls that either lead to a spin or happen at a time that you're too low to be able to correct for it. The first two that came to mind would be a stall spin, as well as a departure stall that would happen, say, if your engine failed on takeoff. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I actually had not really spent much time training for what would happen if my engine failed on a hard climb out. Now, everything I'm gonna talk about here is gonna be specific to my aircraft alone, and even my Kit Fox can vary a little bit from other Kit Foxes, so we'll take that with a grain of salt. But if my airplane were to lose an engine when I'm climbing out at VX, at full throttle, and VX, for those that don't know, is best angle of climb, that's gonna be the steepest deck angle that I could possibly climb out to basically like clear an object or something like that. My plane climbs at such a steep angle and at such a low speed that if the engine quits, I'm gonna decelerate so fast because of gravity that I'm gonna be at stall before I know it. So if my engine were to fail on a takeoff, I would have to react immediately or I could be in a lot of trouble. So what I did was I went up high, put the airplane at 50 or 55 miles an hour, full throttle. I'm climbing at about 1,800, 2,000 feet per minute. And when I'm at that deck angle, pull the throttle, see what it feels like. So this is when I realized that the Kit Fox might have a couple aerodynamic safety features that I don't know if are intentional or unintentional, but they're things that are pretty cool when it comes to scenarios like this. Now, my Kit Fox, which again, we're talking about my aircraft specifically, likes to be taken off with full nose down trim. And I don't know if this is because of the thrust line or the angle of incidence of the tail to that thrust line, but when I'm under high power, I need to be trimmed far forward so I'm not having to push the stick forward to keep the aircraft flying level. So what I'm getting at here is because my plane is at full nose down trim at takeoff, it places me in a position that if I go from a power on or full power environment to a power off, the plane actually noses over on its own. I even tried pulling the power and seeing what the plane would do without putting any control inputs in and it pushed over so hard I almost hit my head on the skylight. Okay, that was a bit of an exaggeration, but it was a roller coaster ride. So that thing just naturally corrected and pushed the nose over for me. To me, it just almost feels like the kit box has your back. Now practicing straight line stalls to me doesn't do much. You wanna do it like you're turning base to final. Right now I am pretty much power off. I'm trying to tighten up that pattern turn a little bit to see if I can get it to stall. My tail keeps wanting to stall, but I can't get the wing to actually stall. There's a reason that my plane doesn't want to stall when I do that, and it comes down to an aspect ratio between the size of the tail and the size of the main wing. Basically, the kit box in general has a relatively small tail compared to other aircraft, but because of the short coupled nature of it, it really doesn't need that big of a tail. And there are some downsides to having the, the smaller tail is that, you know, the elevator becomes less and less effective at slow speeds and it gets a little harder to land a kit fox really slow, you know, as opposed to like a cup. But getting back to the safety feature in that is that it's really hard to get the wing on this plane to stall. And even though uh, the plane can get pretty slow and you can stall the plane, it's gonna talk to you so much and you're gonna run out of elevator way before the plane's gonna wanna just naturally stall. I don't have a scenario where I could trim my aircraft into a stall. So every stall is gonna have to be pretty forced or accelerated 
but again, the input you would be giving to the plane would feel so wrong that it would be very, very hard to accidentally stall the kit box. But again, a stall is not normally what kills someone. What kills is the incipient spin, being that you stalled, you were somewhat uncoordinated, and your plane entered a flat spin. The interesting thing, though, is the Kit Fox also doesn't really like to spin. And now I know some of you guys are not pilots, so I'm gonna go back to some broad strokes here and explain what a spin is and why it's so deadly. So basically, a spin or a flat spin is when one wing of an aircraft is fully stalled and the other isn't. The way this happens is when you get into a stalled scenario, but you aren't perfectly coordinated, so one wing is flying slightly slower than the other, that or it's just blanketed by the air coming off the fuselage, that would cause that slower or that inside wing to stall first. Normally the stalled wing will drop. The pilot's natural reaction is to use ailerons to correct the dropped wing, but when that wing is already stalled, the aileron, when it's attached in a standard configuration, which I'll get to in a second, what that does is it changes the cord line of the wing and effectively changes the angle of attack of the wing. So when you take an already stalled wing and you add angle of attack, all you're doing is exacerbating it. Basically, you gotta figure I have a stalled wing right here. I just added more angle to it and also at the same time lowered the angle to the outside wing. I just made my high wing start flying even faster and stalled my inside wing even deeper. And a lot of times when this happens, say on base to final, you're upside down before you know it. Now that point where you have a stalled wing that you try to lift and your input actually goes the opposite direction is called the region of reverse command. It's a super dangerous phenomenon, but it's just an inherent effect of the aerodynamics at play of a standard wing and aileron. Now the Kit Fox is a little bit different aerodynamically and design-wise than a standard plane that has, say, regular flaps and ailerons. And I know I've explained this before, but I'm gonna go back to the flapperon talk with the Kit Fox, and for those that don't know, the Kit Fox has flapperons, as opposed to standard flaps and ailerons. Basically, it's taking one effective flight control surface and turning it into two flying control surfaces, if that makes sense. There's mechanical mixing inside the plane that allows the same flying surfaces to act as both ailerons as well as flaps. Meaning that when I move my control stick left to right, it will move the flapperons just like it would ailerons to help roll the aircraft. But when I pull the flap handle, it will deflect both flapperons down while still leaving me full aileron authority through the control stick. But what really makes the Kit Fox unique isn't just the flapperons, but the way that they are mounted on the aircraft. So as opposed to standard flaps and ailerons that are gonna be attached to the trailing edge of the wing, flying as one actual flying surface, the flapperons are separated junker style, flying as their own control or flight surface. Now what this means is that because the flapperon is detached from the actual wing's surface and lowered down below it, the flapperon is flying in air that is being pushed off the underside of the wing, basically redirected by the underside of the wing, so the angle of attack of the flapperon is not gonna be the same angle of attack of the wing because the wing is effectively redirecting the air onto the flapperon. But basically, because of that detached orientation of the flapperons, the Kit Fox is actually able to lift a stalled wing because even when your wing is stalled, your flapperon isn't. Which means, for the most part, there really isn't a region of reversed command. So, as far as a Kit Fox goes, it's very hard to spin a Kit Fox. And I would go up and demonstrate one, but I have actually never been trained in a spin. I've never actually spun the aircraft, so I didn't think it was wise to uh, do for my first time in a video like this. But the, the Kit Fox inherently does not want to spin. You can force it into a spin if you stall very heavily with almost an accelerated stall and a punch of, of rudder that's almost getting you into the entry for a snap roll. That'll put the plane in a spin and you really have to fight to even keep the plane in the spin. It's just such an aerodynamically balanced and stable aircraft that it wants to recover from things pretty naturally. So, to kind of sum that up, I feel like this plane inherently and possibly unintentionally, has very good stall preventative, spin resistant, and engine failure reactive natures. Is that even the right term? But it has these inherent design features that I have no idea if they were planned or if they're just the byproduct of a good aircraft design, but they're safety features that 
in the event of some of these worst case scenarios can help prevent either enter them or help get you out of them with relative ease. So there you have it, the Kit Fox. Safest airplane in the world that can just barely kill you. But before I jump back in the plane and get up in the air and go enjoy a little bit more of this weather before it gets too hot and windy out, I do want to take a quick second to say a huge shout out and thank you to my friends over at Squarespace for sponsoring yet another one of my videos. And for those that don't know, Squarespace is the ultimate platform to build a website and run your business. You start with one of their award-winning templates and you craft it into your own beautiful professional looking website that works on both desktop as well as mobile. And because you're starting with one of their templates, it's super simple. Literally anyone can do it. You click to change, drag to drop, and they have features for literally every industry. So it doesn't matter if you're trying to do an online store, a personal blog, professional photo gallery, book your clients on there, have members areas, you can do it with Squarespace. So if you haven't yet, head over to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to purchase, make sure to use code Trent Palmer at checkout. That'll get you 10% off. Thank you again, Squarespace, for sponsoring this one. And you guys know the drill. Like this video if you do. Subscribe if you haven't. Come be my wingman. We'll see you on the next one.